at one at some point the question of Goa found its way to the attention of the US Congress and that for South Africa uh, for the, let's say for the parties in South Africa wishing to keep a low profile was a very dangerous development The trade and diplomatic relationships between South Africa and the US and other Western countries have been full of tension over the last year, if we can put it mildly and diplomatically. The director of the Center for Risk Analysis, Dr. John Endres, who joins us today, recently visited the US amongst meetings with many uh, think tanks and other interested parties. He engaged on the issue of South Africa's uh, standing in the US and the US's view of South Africa at this point in time. John, thanks very much for your time with the CRA YouTube uh, for this week. Just to start off with your trip and some of the initial impressions of South Africa from those people with whom you met, um, favorable, or unfavorable, not to lead the witness here, but I'm sort of trying to give you some options as to what people at this point in time think of, of South Africa. Right, so thanks for inviting me back on, Chris. Um, I think the first observation was that South Africa has dropped out of the international headlines for quite a long time. Um, of course, it dominated international headlines during the times of apartheid and the transition. Uh, once that had been uh, gotten out of the way and resolved, then South Africa became a normal country, in inverted commas, and in the last few years has received relatively little attention from the global media. But that changed over the course of the past year, especially and particularly because of South Africa's relationship with Russia, uh, which put us firmly back in the spotlight. And that was also very much the focus of many of the conversations I had in Washington, where my interlocutors uh, were trying to get an understanding of South Africa's position uh, and also sharing their views of what the US's position should be on South Africa. And this is mostly surrounding the question of uh, South Africa's nominally non-aligned status, so the desire not to align either with the uh, so-called West or the so-called East, which uh, you might want to describe as the liberal West or the, the autocratic East. That non-alignment was placed in question by the fact that South Africa uh, studiously avoided supporting UN resolutions condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and also then escalating from that South Africa's very friendly friendly relations relations as it seemed with Russia, which did not go down well in in Washington. And John, to sort of narrow down a bit on AGOA, so the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act up for renewal in 2025. South Africa forms part of AGOA, which gives preferential, which grants preferential uh, access to U.S. markets for South African companies, South African products. Um, South Africa, not the only African country, of course, but the most uh, economically advanced still country that benefits from this AGOA agreement. On AGOA specifically, we've seen the, the trend line in the direction of the possibility that it could be cancelled, especially if someone like the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, attended the upcoming BRICS summit. The maneuvers around that to try and uh, persuade him or dissuade him from attending from the South African presidency side, do you think South Africa has done enough to ensure that a GOA will be renewed again, perhaps on different terms, but possibly at least the sort of preferential access is extended. Yeah, so on a GOA, uh, there are several conditions under which the US Congress is able to extend these privileges to certain African countries, but by no means all of the countries. And one of those conditions is that the beneficiary should not act contrary to the national interest of the United States. And I think that is the provision that very specifically United States have been flagging in terms of South Africa's relationship with Russia, uh, where these interests are quite clearly contradictory. And that is what led to the unhappiness. Uh, it led to the topic of a GOA renewal for South Africa being raised in the first place. My impression from speaking to people in the trade uh, uh, space, the administration in Washington, is that the administration itself was going to renew a GOA. Uh, I think, you know, it's run by technocrats. They like to do things slowly, methodically, and cautiously. They understand that uh, South Africa has benefited from a GOA for historical reasons and because it's considered to be an ally of the United States in Africa. However, at one at some point, the question of a GOA found its way to the attention of the US Congress. 
And that for South Africa, uh, for the, let's say for the parties in South Africa wishing to keep a low profile was a very dangerous development because once Congress takes an interest in you, then anything can happen because the politics can be quite volatile. Things can play out in your favor, but they can also go very much against you. And I think that is the risky situation that South Africa got into over its relationship with Russia. And we saw some voices being raised in the political sphere uh, suggesting that South Africa should be uh, kicked out of the Goa. And ultimately, I think that is not going to happen. Uh, and the reason for that is firstly that South Africa does like that, that the US does like to retain its leverage over South Africa and Goa is an important point for that. Secondly, the US also retains a lot of sympathy for South Africa despite the frustration that the diplomatic community has uh, felt in recent months. And finally, the thing you mentioned, which is that Vladimir Putin was disinvited from the BRICS summit in South Africa, played an important role, I think, in easing the tension somewhat. So we'll probably still see a little bit of talk uh, around Goa and whether South Africa should be in it or not. But for now, I think that South Africa's membership is safe. Don, in a few of our risk alerts, um, which our clients receive every Monday morning um, at 7 a.m., we raise the, the, the risk for the U.S. in terms of possibly pushing South Africa more into uh, Russia's arms, as it were. So with comments, especially by Ambassador Brigitte, around allegations of arms and munitions loaded onto the Lady R ship that docked in Simonstown uh, last year in South Africa. We thought perhaps the US is inadvertently, it wouldn't be their overall intention, of course, but through different uh, comments in public forums, maybe not only doing it in a, in a sort of behind the scenes way, but in more public forum, putting pressure on the government and in that way, uh, pushing South Africa closer to Russia. To really try and put you on the spot, do you think maybe some of Russia's moves and ideas have backfired in that regard and that there will still be tension or sort of light tension between South Africa and Russia, but overall, uh, between South Africa and the US, but overall, that relationship has a somewhat still stable footing. Yeah, so I think that Russia was actually doing pretty well in the diplomatic space in terms of bringing South Africa closer into its orbit. Mm. Uh, and the United States was watching from the sidelines, almost uh, seeing this happen, but not really able to do much about it. And I think that Ambassador Brigitte's intervention, as unorthodox as it was and as, at risky, as risky as it was, was successful in recalibrating, reshifting the dialogue between South Africa and the United States. I think it was a necessary intervention in hindsight, uh, which could have gone horribly wrong, but I think in the end played out in the interests of the United States. Uh, and currently, I would say that the United States diplomatic uh, interests are in the ascendancy versus those of Russia. Uh, and the disinvitation of Vladimir Putin, I think, must be counted as a diplomatic defeat for uh, Russian foreign relations efforts. And John, just as a final question, looking forward a bit, obviously, in South Africa, diplomatic, uh, diplomatically, domestically, the biggest focus is on the, the general election in 2024, which I think needs to happen by August at the very latest. So from the US side and from your engagements, any thoughts on uh, where they think things are going to go and possibly can South Africa still strengthen things like AGOA, other trade agreements in terms of moving forward? Or do you think the sort of the current malaise we see in the administration means, you know, that's not really going to happen anytime soon. A goal will be renewed, but that doesn't mean that South Africa is radically going to reform domestic policy in any way to sort of now strengthen property rights and all that sort of thing. I think that the, the ANC and the ANC government held a huge um, goodwill advantage in the United States for many, many years. And I think that that very large stockpile of credit is now being lost. Uh, squandered and heading close to zero. So I think the ANC is not enjoying as much goodwill as it used to 10 or 20 years ago, not to mention 30 years ago. And the United States, I think, does harbor a lot of goodwill towards South Africa as a country, but a lot of disillusionment towards the ANC and its performance in government. If there were to be a change in administration in 2024, uh, towards a government that was more friendly towards the United States, I think that government would find open doors in Washington. It would, would find very considerable opportunities to strengthen relationships, to uh, multiply trade, uh, and to, to, to foster a really very positive working relationship. 
I think the ANC might be able to do it, but I'm not really seeing signs that it is keen to do so. Uh, when we look at the policy documents, uh, the statements coming out of the party, uh, that really doesn't seem to be a focus of the international relations game currently. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comment below. And a reminder, please, before you leave, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutton for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.